My first encounter with Meredith Wilson's genius in The Music Man wasn't through the musical itself, but via Conan O'Brien's masterful Golden Age episode of The Simpsons, titled Marge vs. the Monorail. In this episode, Phil Hartman voices the smooth-talking conman, Lyle Lanley, who dupes the citizens of Springfield into investing in a monorail. Only later did I realize that this episode is a clever homage to The Music Man, a musical that Conan O'Brien holds, obviously, in high regard. Several sharp-witted comedians that entertained millennials like myself, people like Norm MacDonald, Seth MacFarlane, Tina Fey, have all shown an appreciation for this musical. When I finally watched the film adaptation of The Music Man, its quaint and cheerful demeanor left me puzzled. How could these semi-sarcastic minds be so enamored with something seemingly so wholesome? But as I grew older, I began to see the show's edge. Beneath its folksy charm lies a deep vein of sharp, subversive wit. While no production or revival has fully embraced this subversive edge, in my opinion, it is undeniably present. At times, the show even pokes fun at the Midwest, despite Wilson's apparent affection for that area. The Music Man is more than just Wilson's creation, however. His musical brilliance shines, but much of the show's wit and sharpness comes from his collaborator, Franklin Lacey. Wilson's initial vision for the musical was quite different. He wanted to draw from his memoir, focusing on a non-verbal disabled boy in the fictional River City, Iowa, and a mysterious traveling salesman who helps the boy come out of his shell. This idea evolved over time, with the show originally intended as a television special. After many revisions and the addition of a love interest inspired by a woman Wilson met during his wartime service in Utah, the music man transformed into the tale of a con man who arrives in Iowa to sell music lessons and form a band with no intention of following through on his promises. The musical critiques greed and the naivety of small-town folks. In my view, it's not a happy story, even though Harold Hill, the con man, finds a form of redemption in the end. The Music Man serves as a sardonic commentary on middle America's fixation on mediocrity, conservative values, and gossip, which leaves people distracted and vulnerable to scams. This is most evident in the groundbreaking opening number, Rock Island. Rock Island, named after the train route that cuts through Iowa, introduces us to the world of fast-talking early 20th century American salesmen. On the surface, it's a simple conversation about the life of a traveling salesman. But a closer look reveals that the song captures the essence of the American spirit, driven by capitalism, craving profit and competition, yet insistent on people knowing their place. Alongside trouble, this song encapsulates the true edge of the music man. As many of you who subscribe to this channel already know, and if you don't subscribe yet, why not click that button now so you can follow along with this series? I have been creating a few videos on what makes a good opening number in a musical. I have stated that a good opening number requires three elements. World building, clear theme presentation, and the establishment of conflict or central question that the musical will resolve by the end. In the first video of this series, we examined how Weber and Rice's Heaven on Their Minds from Jesus Christ Superstar expresses the singular frustration of Judas in his following of Jesus Christ. We also saw how the prologue from Sondheim's Into the Woods balances cynicism with magic to create a unique setting for Sondheim and Lapine to explore the nature of growing up. Wilson's Rock Island is not as clear-cut as these other two. Rock Island follows a deeply theatrical mode, using mechanical characters, secondary to the plot, or even appearing in only one scene, to serve as audience surrogates and establish the world we will inhabit for the next two hours. 
We are introduced to a car within a train populated entirely by traveling salesmen. The number is buttoned by a call-out from the conductor indicating the next station stop. The next stop, crossing the state line into Iowa. Board the environment board. of the train is set up not by the music, which only has a simple snare keeping time, but by the words themselves. The first salesman begins his complaints about how country folk consistently want to buy things on credit even though they are fine paying cash for other items, and he slowly accelerates his speech as the train leaves the station. Lyrics are meticulously chosen to resemble the clacking sounds of wheels moving along the track. Sss and shhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
You are creating nothing in this action, but you make a lot of sound doing it. This song is the same. There's a lot of patter and opinion. Lots of things are said, but there's very little meaning. And to me, this is what being American is. But let's hold off on that for a minute and look at our final essential element. The establishment of conflict. The Music Man does not have a traditional antagonist because the central character, Harold Hill, serves as both the antagonist and protagonist. He is an anti-hero. Hill is morally dubious, primarily because he is a con artist looking to sell his wares, specifically a big brass band, and take the money and run. Unlike other salesmen who intend to sell something tangible, Harold Hill never plans to supply his inventory. The song Rock Island first introduces Hill as a new legend in the traveling sales community. The other salesmen wonder who he is and why he can sell band instruments and uniforms so well despite, as one salesman says, his not knowing the territory. This skepticism about Hill is more than just about him being an outsider. As the musical progresses, we see that the inhabitants of River City share this skepticism and fear. The ladies' cotillion fears racy literature like Rabelais, Chaucer, and Balzac. The school board fears youth idleness, and the whole town fears the pool hall. Moreover, there is great suspicion of Marion the librarian, who is seen as having an unfounded relationship with the old miser who left all the books of the town library to her. What we see here is the beginning of a fear of outsiders, when one salesman says Harold Hill cannot be on the level because he doesn't know the territory, it becomes clear that it is not Hill's track record under suspicion. He clearly closes enough deals to be something of a legend. But the fact that he is a geographic outsider. Competition is disliked, especially from outsiders. I want to return now to the theme of credentials and trust I mentioned earlier, the lack of meaning in the American experience. In this musical, Things are often assessed based on their credentials, with much done on trust and without verification. When I was a young man, I visited Mason City, where I took a tour of the Meredith Wilson House and Main Street America, the set of The Music Man, which they had maintained to some degree in the town. The docent who guided us through consistently talked about how Harold Hill is a go-getter and an American hero. This struck me as odd. Isn't the plot of the musical that Harold Hill is all talk and promise but no follow-through? His intention is to con the townspeople, yet he accidentally ends up teaching the town youths how to play instruments and get uniforms, all in an effort to impress Marion. He is not a hero, but a lucky villain. Is this what Americans revere? Businessmen who, through their stumbling course to make a profit, create a good side effect? Now, a note on the composition of Rock Island, because... Omitting a brief analysis would be wrong, even though it doesn't fit perfectly into this discussion. This song is talk sung, and resembles spoken word. It is never actually sung in the traditional sense. In comments on my video on the opening from Into the Woods, a commenter noted this song's similarity to rap. Although it is indeed similar to rap in that it is talk sung, it is not rap. Rap is a musical style that comes out of call and response in gospel music, particularly Pentecostal music from black churches, which itself originates from the traditional music of West African peoples who were taken as slaves to the Americas in the 17th century. Rock Island's use of talk singing, combining rhythm and phonemic sounds, has more in common instead with patter. Patter comes from the liturgical practice of tonic prayer, in the medieval Roman Catholic Church. You might know one of the most famous patters, which is by Thomas of Chileno, for the Dies Irae. Dies Irae, Dies Ila. That is patter. During the development of early opera in the 15th and 16th century, this type of composition, which was fast spoken on pitch with a rhythm, was combined with the ancient technique of Parabasis, an older component of ancient Greek drama, to create the patter song, a musical example of rhythm combined with strategically chosen words for their percussive sound. Great examples of patter can be found in Mozart's late operas, most notably in the opening scene of Don Giovanni. 
Rossini's operas use patter to the extreme to create heightened humor and drama, and finally, the operettas slash operas of Gilbert and Sullivan are where patter becomes a main feature. My ex-girlfriend once told me about a production of The Music Man, where Harold Hill was played by a black actor. Rather than glossing over this choice, the show leaned into the tension a black interloper might face in a turn-of-the-century American town. She told me there was an air of tension in every moment of the show, highlighting the edgy nature of the musical. In this video, I have shown how Rock Island builds and establishes a theme, demonstrating through a conflict of territory how The Music Man is not just a fun show about a sardonic character coming to town, but also has a sinister underbelly that will change the main street of every American town. On the surface, Rock Island is a simple conversation about the life of traveling salesmen. However, a closer look reveals that the song captures the essence of the American spirit, driven by capitalism, craving profit and competition, yet insistent on people knowing their place, and Harold Hill does not know his place. When we learn that Hill has been sitting and listening to these salesmen talk for the entirety of the song, and he decides to take the challenge of making a quick buck in River City, we see not only an introduction to the musical's protagonist, but also the entry of a trickster who is about to stir up the town, and therefore all of society. It is interesting to note that this theme of less than wholesome fast talkers coming to a sleepy town is common in Americana and musicals. Look at other examples in plays like The Rainmaker and the later musical based on the same story, 110 in the Shade. Or even popular television shows like Suits or Community feature a con man-like character coming in and shaking up the apple cart. This archetype pops up repeatedly. No wonder Conan O'Brien created Marge vs. the Monorail and used The Music Man as a basis for it. For this story of fraud, manipulation, revelation, reluctant rehabilitation, and then ultimate heroism is as American as, well, the music man. I have conversations like this often, and I like to share out videos discussing arts, music, and the occasional comic book. And if you like conversations like this, why don't you like or subscribe so you can find out when I post more. Also, if you want, why don't you leave me a comment underneath the video, even if it's just an emoji. Any activity under there helps the algorithm pick up these videos and builds a larger community where we can have conversations like this on the regular. Thank you.